Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we're talking about what to buy first when on a budget for Star Wars Armada, the Imperial Edition for 2023 for all you Empire players. And let's face it, the Empire is the best faction in Star Wars Armada, as well as most Star Wars tabletop skirmish war type games, because they're frankly the coolest. They have the coolest looking stuff and they kind of dominate. So if you're looking to start a faction, I definitely suggest the Empire. They're a really groovy faction, super fun to play. And we're going to talk about what to buy first in 2023. Why 2023? Well, we have seen some changes. There haven't been any new expansions in a little while, but there has been new free content and new shakeups to the game that have impacted the ways that you can play this game and what ships you can use for what faction and the balance and what's, what's good, what's bad, all of that. It's changed over the years. A little bit. So if you're just getting into Star Wars Armada or you're looking to jump into the Empire, hopefully you'll find this as a helpful starting place. And if you want to learn more, I invite you to stick around. We are doing a very big giveaway right now for a $100 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. If you're already a subscriber, you're already halfway there. Uh, this is going to run through Halloween, so you have plenty of time left to enter to win that, and I typically announce winners towards the end of my videos, so make sure you watch all the way to the end for any of my video content that you watch. Uh, also, if you want to learn more and ask more questions, get more involved in the community, we have links in the video description below. You can check out social media links and our great family-friendly gaming Discord. Links for that are in the description below. With all that being said, Let's go ahead and jump right into what to buy first for the Empire for Star Wars Armada. Uh, I'm going to start off, of course, with the core set. Uh, a lot of people have suggested that hopefully they'll kind of revisit these core sets at some point. Hopefully that will happen. I'd love to see an Imperial-specific core set one day. But as of right now, the Armada uh, core set is your starting point. It is not a very cheap core set, however. A lot of times you can get it. Uh, on a discount or on a sale if you wait for the right time. Uh, in this course, it is a two-player starter. So you're going to be getting one Victory Class Star Destroyer for the Empire, and that is it. The other two ships are going to be the uh, Rebel ships, and, and Nebulon being a Corvette, which you can play against with a friend. And that's one of the things that makes this a two-player starter or a two-player core set. It's sort of a mini game in a box. Uh, but this also has all the things you need to get started playing. It's got your damage deck, it's got your dice, it's got your range tool, it's got your movement tool, it's got your asteroids, uh, it's got a rule book that is slightly out of date, but still good. It's also got squadrons, you're going to get like six TIE Fighter squadrons in here, which is going to be a good foundation for the beginnings of your Imperial fleet. Uh, and also you're going to have some X-Wings for the Rebel player. So you're going to get a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of the game, and you will want to move forward from here. Uh, it's not enough for you to play a full 400-point game, a standard game. It's just for you, not enough for you to play a learning game. Uh, if you're going to move past this, which typically most players do, uh, there are certain things that you'll want to get. The very first thing I will tell people to try to secure and make sure they pick up is the upgrade card collection. This is a big box uh, that came out with Armada's 1.5 rule set. It was a big rules change that came out at the time of the Clone Wars. This is going to have all of your Imperial commanders, all of your upgrades, your Imperial officers, everything that you might have to have bought a very specific uh, ship expansion for. You won't have to go out and buy a Liberty, uh, you know, an MC-80 Liberty for the Rebels just to get spinal armament anymore. You're not going to have to do things like that. You're not going to have to buy ships across the aisle with this upgrade card collection. It's gonna have almost every upgrade. It's gonna have two of those, with the exception of unique upgrades. Um, it's gonna have multiple copies of most of the upgrades that you're gonna want. It's gonna be a great way to fill out your fleet and be able to put different upgrades on ships. There's a lot of upgrades in here that are gonna turn that Victory Star Destroyer into a very poor ship, into a very good ship. And so that's, uh, it's very good for the ship that you all already have in your core set. And that's an important thing. It's also going to make every other ship good. It's going to give you all of the commanders with their errata because some of them had been changed. And uh, a very important thing. Moving forward, uh, I'm throwing the Chimera up here. Now, there are two different Imperial Star Destroyer expansions. The only one I'm including in this list is the Chimera, as far as, uh, but I will talk about the other ISD because it is important 
over time to get both. And the other one is just called the Imperial Star Destroyer expansion. They're, uh, they're both going to give you an Imperial Star Destroyer. Uh, the Imperial Star Destroyer expansion gives you the classic Star Destroyer. The Chimera gives you this improved artwork. It's got the Thrawn's Chimera symbol on the top and on the bottom. Even, even though in reality it was only on the bottom. Problem with Star Wars Armada, you kind of look at your ships from the top down. So it was a very clever solution. If you're ever like if you're a new player and you're getting into this and saying, why did they put it on the top and on the bottom? Because they wanted it to be accurate by having it on the bottom, but they also wanted it to be recognizable. Nobody looks at the bottom of their ships in a game of Star Wars Armada. Because your ships face the game board. You're not going to be picking up ships and looking at the bottoms of them in the middle of a game. So it was an interesting compromise that they came up with to do this. It's a groovy, groovy ship. Um, now, the Chimera expansion comes with two different versions of the Star Destroyer. And the classic Star Destroyer expansion comes with the two original versions. All of which are viable, have their uses. Uh, the classic version is a very good version. But it, it excels when you buy some of the latest expansions for the Clone Wars, when it gets a lot of those salvo mechanics and tokens that improve salvo, a lot of stuff that make the Imperial Star Destroyer 2, which comes in the classic Imperial Star Destroyer expansion, really thrive, is some of the new stuff that's found in some of the newest expansions only. And those are primarily for Clone Wars players. So to make the classic Star Destroyer really, really good, you kind of have to buy ships that you might not need. And so... That's why I'm going with the Chimera as my recommendation. It gets you a Imperial Star Destroyer. You can run a Psy Moon or a Kuat variant. And, uh, and those are both very, very good. Um, it's also going to come with two Mandalorian Gauntlet Fighters. This increases the value of this expansion pack. Because again, this is not a cheap ship. This is a $60 pack. It's also a, a ship that's going to use up a lot of your fleet points in game, which is a cool thing, but... You know, it's got its cost. But what I, what makes this, uh, you know, so much even better of a value is those Gauntlet Fighters give you two more squadrons, but they pull double duty if you're a multi-faction player. If you picked up the core set and you, maybe you're thinking about also playing Rebels or maybe your friend also wants to play Rebels, you can use one of those Gauntlets as Fen Rao to play as a Rebel version of the Gauntlet. And the, that's a new development that you can get from the latest Rapid Reinforcements hosted on AtomicMassGames.com. Uh, they have Rapid Reinforcements. They're these free PDF they like print and play expansions for, for, for Armada, and they allow you to use existing ships in new and different ways. And one of the things that they have done with that is they've given the Gauntlet Fighter to the Rebels also, but you still can only get the physical Gauntlet Fighter here. So you're going to get two Gauntlets in here, which is really cool. Um, they're not the best squadrons for the Empire, but it's two more squadrons. So you're getting a little more value with this with this pack. It's a, it's a great expansion all, uh, all around. Eventually, you know, once you're no longer on a budget, you know, once you're able to kind of expand, I, you, you'll eventually want to get uh, the, a second Star Destroyer. Uh, and I suggest going with the ISD for that one. Some people have three. Uh, I think I have like five because I'm crazy. But, uh, but yes. <laughs> so uh, multiple Imperial Star Destroyers are eventually a good idea, but, but not when you're on a budget, not when you're first starting out. Go with this one. Uh, you also want to get some some squadrons. You will already have a couple of TIE Fighters in the core set. Unlike my Rebel version of this build, I'm exp uh, I'm not suggesting you start with the Imperial Fighter Squadrons, the in initial Imperial Fighter Squadrons expansion. I'm su suggesting you go with Imperial Fighter Squadrons 2 as your first uh, purchase. For one, you're not getting any duplicates here, so you'll you already have some TIE Fighters. This is giving you some new stuff. For two, this stuff, the quality of the sh squadrons you're getting here are really, really good. You're going to really want some of these. Uh, the Lambdas are very good. The Decimators are very good. The Phantoms are kind of cool. Um, but also, uh, your TIE Defenders are really good. With Rapid Reinforcements, we also got Darth Vader in a TIE Defender as well. So you can also run one of these uh, you know, TIE Defenders as Darth Vader and make it even crazier. So like these are all... like top tier squadrons uh for for different types of builds and uh whereas the rebel version of this was just like mid-tier squadrons the imperial version of this this is a really good uh pack and definitely definitely you want to get uh, one of these some players will get multiples of these 
I don't think you really need to get too many of these. The, I, the, the advantage to getting multiples of these is the decimators that come in here are really, really strong, but also expensive squadrons. And if you run like four or even six decimators, it can be a nasty, nasty squadron presence. Um, but there's only a handful of builds that do that. So just pick up one of these and, and you'll do pretty well. Uh, moving forward, the Imperial Assault Carriers. Now, the Gazantes, as we call them. These are incredible. It's a flotilla, has special rules, like it can't ram other ships and do damage to them unless they're also a flotilla. Very fragile, but they have the scatter defense token, so they have a chance to ignore all damage to them. Kind of hard to kill unless you have an accuracy or a way to guarantee accuracy. But these are excellent carriers and support ships. They are very, very cheap. They give you an extra activation, and these are very common to be run alongside bigger ships like a Imperial Star Destroyer, list that may only have one or two big ships in the whole list this is a way for you to get more deployments and more activations without having to spend 100 plus points per ship um, there are two in this pack but it's just one ship it'll be uh, a flotilla is kind of defined as multiple ships on a single base and that's a flotilla right there uh, that's kind of how flotillas look in this game this is also a really great uh, ship to pick up if you're interested in playing Separatists as well, as the Separatists can use these as a Sea Rock Gazanti, courtesy of Rapid Reinforcements, posted on AtomicMassGames.com. So if you're a multi-faction player, even more value for this, but it's still, it's, it's a staple. Uh, there is a cap to two flotillas in a standard game. So while these are great, a lot of people will pick up two of them. Uh, most builds have at least one Imperial Assault Carrier in them. Uh, but there are quite a few that have two. Um, I wouldn't suggest getting more than two because for standard games, you're capped at only being able to run two. So there's really no reason to get three unless you're trying to do your own kind of house rules or really, really large games beyond the 400 point standard, which sometimes happens. Um, next up, my favorite ship in the entire game, the greatest ship in all of Star Wars Armada, the Imperial Light Cruiser, a.k.a. the Architans cruiser this is an absolute wonderful ship it's inexpensive it is the um, very functional has a good side arcs which is a rare thing for the empire uh, has an, a, a strange flying pattern um, but what makes it good is it's got a lot of dice has good solid damage output at a low fleet point cost and is actually surprisingly survivable for being a small ship uh, it's, it's just a very well-rounded ship in terms of, uh, you know, survivability versus damage output versus cost. And uh, the only thing it really doesn't do well is, is you know, um, it doesn't act well as a carrier for squadrons. It can do only really one squadron at a time. So not super great in that regard. But it is, uh, it's just a really good firepower ship, a really good ship-to-ship -ship, um, expansion. And the price point, as far as dollars, is also pretty cheap. The biggest problem with the Imperial Light Cruiser is that you can never find them because they're so good of a ship. As soon as they're in stock, they instantly sell out. It's like people are mashing the F5 refresh button on these all the time at every retailer. So if you ever see these, uh, definitely at least pick one up. Um, and honestly, it's a ship you can run multiples of. Uh, you can fit six in a build. I have five. I routinely run four or five Architans in builds. Uh, so, you know, if you're thinking about getting multiples of, this sh of a ship, this is a great contender for a multiples um, selection. Uh, but but even just having one or even two uh, really do nice. I'd, I'd like to fly these guys in pairs also. Two or three is a, is a really comfortable number. And for their point cost, they you know, two or three of these can fit in a lot of existing builds. So, uh, but it's a great ship and it's my favorite ship in the whole game. So, of course, I've got to recommend it. As an early purchase moving forward slightly more expensive but still a small ship that is uh, quite survivable especially for its size the uh, gladiator star destroyer expansion pack uh, this one is a very good expansion pack uh, but a lot of people will only need one of these the gladiator is you know it has a brace token it's one of the few small ships that have a brace uh, it is most well known for the being the Demolisher. There's a title 
that allows this ship to break one of the game's most sacred rules in that you shoot first and then move. Uh, this is a ship that with, when equipped with the, uh, the Demolisher title can shoot once, then move, and then shoot a second time after it moves. It's the only ship in the game that can shoot after it moves. And uh, that makes it extremely powerful. You, of course, since it's a unique title for that, you can only run one of those. Um, and the rest of the ways to run the ship are a little bit less than spectacular. So uh, if you can, at a, like at a midpoint for this game, definitely consider getting a single uh, Gladiator uh, class Star Destroyer expansion. Um, there aren't too many builds that use multiple Gladiators, but some do exist. It has certainly happened from time to time. A notable thing about this particular ship is that it does count as a Star Destroyer, as a Gladiator class Star Destroyer. And there are certain upgrades that are Star Destroyer only, such as the Seventh Fleet titles that come in the Chimera expansion um, or in the Upgrade card expansion. Uh, and this will be eligible to take those titles. So that's something to consider if you're not going to be running the Demolisher title, which typically you'll always run the Demolisher title. But if you're trying something else, uh, that's something else worth noting about this particular expansion. Uh, moving forward, the uh, you know a little bit more on the squadrons. Squadrons are look, they're they're cheap. You get eight squadrons here. Uh, the Imperials Fighters Squadrons Expansion Pack gives you your basic squadrons. So this has two more Tie Fighters, two Tie Bombers, two Tie Interceptors, and then two Tie Advanced. Now, out of all of these, the Interceptors are probably the best. You're getting good named pilots for your Tie Fighters and uh, bombers. Uh, but you're getting like Suntir Fell, for example, for your Tie Interceptors, who's very good. Counters with a, works well with a lot of stuff. Mauler Mythil is not bad. So your named pilots in here are pretty good. You're also getting Darth Vader in a TIE Advanced, but he's not as popular now since if, if a lot of times if you're going to run Darth Vader as a squadron, he's a little better to run in the TIE Defender due to rapid reinforcements. So this is kind of a mid-level. Like the Imperial Bombers aren't half bad, but what's more popular due to, uh, you know, Admiral Sloan is uh, TIE Fighters and TIE Interceptors. And so that's kind of your, your better thing out of this particular expansion, but I have this one lower since uh, TIE Fighters are really good and cheap, and you're already getting six of them in the core set. So you're going to have two more here, which, again, you can fit lots of TIE Fighters in a build. So there's really nothing wasteful about picking up one of these packs. Uh, but there was an age where Imperial uh, TIE Bombers were super, super popular, and people would buy multiples of these packs. And Imperial Bombers aren't half bad, but I feel like ever since Sloan came out, uh, the Bombers have become a little bit less important and TIE Fighters and, and TIE Interceptors have been a little bit more important. So while this is a good pack, I don't think it has to be one of your first purchases. It's kind of in that middle middle area where we are. Um, moving forward, speaking of squadrons, and as you build up your squadron presence, it's an important thing to consider a really beefy carrier to push those squadrons, to give them extra bonuses, and to be able to activate as many as possible in one fell swoop. And that's where the Quasar kicks in. The Imperial Light Carrier Expansion is uh, the best carrier in the game. You may recognize this ship from Star Wars Rebels. It is a fantastic Imperial medium ship, and it pushes squadrons very, very well. Uh, it won't be super important like when you're first starting out the game if you've only got like those TIE Fighters that come in the core set. Uh, but as you develop your squadron game, which takes... It's a little bit more of an advanced... Uh, Armada playstyle to really get good with activating squadrons because a lot of squadrons have their own range bubbles and, and overlapping effects that combo with each other. Uh, there's a lot of that aspect to this um, <clears throat> to this ship and, and to pushing squadrons and like, which ones am I going to activate? Which ones am I going to give the bonus to? Which ones can I afford to wait with? Where do I need to move this guy to tie up enemy squadrons so that the rest can do what they want unobstructed? It takes a little bit more game know-how. So while this particular ship is actually priced pretty well for a medium ship, it's, uh, you know, squadron heavy fleets are a little bit more suited to a moderate to advanced player. And I don't necessarily recommend a Quasar as one of your first ships when you're starting out in Armada. So this one isn't as much about the budget as it is about uh, th that it's, you know, it may be a little bit intimidating for your first couple of games to start with like a, a Quasar trying to push squadrons and, and really... Because the victory that comes in the core set is actually a pretty good carrier as well. So that's a that, that's you have already got a good carrier. You don't necessarily need a super carrier just yet. But when you get to that point, um, definitely go for it. And by the way, let me throw in a caveat here. 
if there's anything that I say is better to wait, or if it's something that I don't talk about that much, but you really like it, you should absolutely get it first. Like, if you really, like, maybe you got an Armada because of Star Wars Rebels and you want that Quasar, then absolutely get this first. You know, don't let my suggestions be the ultimate factor in your determination. Your fun factor should be the biggest thing. So if there's something that you really want, then go for it and learn it. Maybe you won't use it as optimally in your first couple of games, but you'll have it on the tabletop. Now, we always saw the Rebels using this. And there's not a rebel version of this ship, at least at this time. But you could always just run like in a rebel assault frigate if you're playing rebels, and then put the ship model on there and be like, oh, it's an assault frigate. But you know, because it's they're they're kind of comparable. Um, but you could use the model, like so you can you can homebrew stuff like that as long as your opponent is okay with it for a casual game. You can still kind of get the the thematic feel of the rebels using this, uh, but you won't really be able to have the rebels use this uh, at least right now but you know there's a lot of fun ways since a lot of the ship bases are interchangeable you could always kind of just be like well i'm actually running an assault frigate but i'm going to put this ship model on here and have have fun with it and and do that to you know to kind of simulate those thematic episodes so maybe one day we'll actually get a rebel version of this i think that would be pretty cool let's move forward a little bit uh we're going to talk about the imperial raider um now as far as price point, this is a very cheap ship to buy. Does not use, you know, doesn't cost a whole lot of dollars. Doesn't cost a whole lot of fleet points. So you can get lots of these in your build. But at the same time, it's a very squishy ship. Now, the primary strength of the Imperial Raider at launch was that it was a very good anti-squadron ship. It was very good at, you know, picking off squadrons, doing, putting out flak damage, and, uh, and bringing enemy X-Wings and TIE Fighters and things like that to their knees. However... Um, it has gained some usage as different uh, campaign expansions have come out and new titles have become available. It now can give you some deployment shenanigans, which are a little bit advanced in the, in their benefit. Um, but I have this one later on the list primarily because it is a fragile ship. A lot of players who will run raiders, especially if they're new to the game, will see those raiders destroyed before they get close enough to enemy ships because it's a close range ship. It's got mostly blue and black dice. It's going to try and get close to an enemy ship and unleash a fairly decent payload for, for you know a good for its for its size. It's uh you know it doesn't have that many dice, but it can do some damage if it gets up close, or it can drop boarding teams and things like that. It can do some damage, but it's got to get close and it's got to survive long enough to get close and then to activate. Uh, if it can do that, it can be very effective. But again, that's more of an advanced play style. And I'd hate for a new player to to kind of put a Darth Vader boarding team uh, or, or you know on a, on an Imperial Raider in hopes that I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there and put external racks and I'm gonna try and blow up your ship and then it gets blown up before they get to do anything and then they feel bad in their first game. You know what I mean? So um, it's it's got a little bit high of a skill a little bit higher skill uh, skill floor uh, to use a, an Imperial Raider well. There are definitely different uh, strategies to employ the Raider. But it's not one of the best beginner-friendly ships, I think. So that's why I have it a little bit later on the list. Speaking of ships that aren't beginner-friendly, uh, the Onager class Star Destroyer. Now, this is an expensive ship. That's one of the reasons it's a little bit later in this list. It's also one of the biggest offenders in the game for being sort of unbalanced and broken. This is a very good ship. A very good ship. This may be your first purchase because you want something that's really good. But it also can be kind of oppressive with how good it is. It uh, is in need for some errata and points adjustments to bring it in line with its current power level. It is also really cool looking. Um, and it can be very satisfying to use for the person who's employing this uh, this Onager class Star Destroyer. A lot of people run multiple Onagers with a lot of squadrons. It's a very popular meta list for a while. In other words, uh, the meta game or the popular, the competitive tournament players would often run multiple onagers in a list, and that used to be, you know, six or seven out of the top eight were all lists featuring this ship. This is one of the most competitive and, uh, you know, overpowered ships in the game based on the current points, cost, and rules set for it. That may change at some point. But I have it lower on the list for two reasons. One is because it is so competitive, it could be 
it, it runs the risk of being a negative player experience, and that's not good for new players. They sh I don't I don't think new players, um, you know, should especially if you're new, you might be playing against somebody else that's new. I'd hate for you to you know be learning this game and then completely dominate your opponent before they can even do anything. It would be perfect, flawless victories. Like I I tabled my opponent before they even got within attack range of me. You know, like that that's not good for either one of you. It might feel cool at the moment, but it's going to make, you know, it's, it's just it's not good for the health of, uh, of the people playing. Uh, it could, because to counter these, it requires specific things, and new players may not build for that. But also, it's kind of expensive uh, at, you know, at, at uh, you know, closer, pushing upwards of almost 80 bucks for this ship. It's, uh, it's a little more on the expensive side. Now, it is a fun ship. And once you get more advanced and, and more comfortable with the game, you should definitely check one of these ships out. Uh, but but use them sparingly and make sure your opponent is you know understands that you're going to be using a very uh, a try hard sort of list if you're running uh, one or more onagers because they can be very offensive firing uh, you know all the way across the board to where you can't be you know you can't be attacked back is uh, is nasty and that's kind of what they do. Uh, moving forward, we've got the uh, rogues and villains pack for. Uh, you know, this is a dual faction pack. It's later on the list because you're only getting half the stuff. It's um, it's also not as powerful as it used to be. So for the four ships you're getting, you're getting bounty hunter ships, right? You're getting Boba Fett and the Slave One. You're getting Dengar and the Jump Master. You're getting a Hound's Tooth. You're getting IG-88. Um, cool stuff. Uh, you're getting, you know, and they're cool, iconic, recognizable squadrons. You're also getting four Rebel uh, rebel uh, packs like the Millennium Falcon and the, you know the Dash Rendar and the I you know YT twenty four hundreds and and things like that. Um, it's a, a much higher value if you play both Rebels and Empire for sure. And then then it may be one of your one of your first buys. But uh, but but also the, the, I think the biggest selling point in this pack when when it was younger is that the fire sprays were a really good rogue bomber and they are still good. Uh, but the decimators that you already have, if you've been following this list, that were in that first squadron pack that we talked about, Imperial Fighters 2, or Imperial Squadrons 2, um, is are even better, in my opinion. So you're getting less in this expansion that is crucial, um, and, you know, Intel exists in this expansion, and that keyword has been changed to not be so good. So, like, the power level of this, of what this squadron brings to the game, isn't the same as it used to be. And so I have this ranked a little bit lower because you're only getting, you know, four squadrons instead of eight for just the Empire. And they're not the, they're not ultra strong squadrons anymore. They're just kind of moderate. Um, of course, again, theme can also trump mechanics. So if you want Boba Fett, you should totally get it because you'll get Boba Fett. And that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, he, Boba Fett's just not as meta strong as he used to be. He's still cool, though. I actually really like Boba Fett. Um, and he is still kind of strong, you know, he's just less crucial. And those fire sprays, or you can run them as generic fire sprays too. They're, uh, you know, they're still good. They're just not as you know, necessarily crucial as they used to be for a lot of builds. Uh, moving forward is the Interdictor. Uh, it's more of an advanced ship. Uh, again, that's, that's one reason that puts it farther up on the list. It's a medium ship. It's a little on the expensive side because the size, is, you know, it's almost the size of a large ship. But it's a, it's a pretty chunky medium ship, very tanky, uh, a good ship by a lot of respects, but it's got some issues with it that put it a little bit lower on the list. It, it has some special upgrades that allow some game board manipulation with obstacles and, and you know, placing gravity wells and things like that. Slightly more advanced rule set for employing this ship and making it work. So it's a little bit more for an advanced player. Once you've had multiple games under your belt and you really have a feel for Armada, you may be ready to try out an Interdictor. Uh, but it's also uh, point-costed in not the best place. Like, it's, it's, it's a little overpriced as far as how many fleet points it will be using up in your build. Um, out of all of the ships in the game, you know, ships typically come with a double-sided cardboard. You have two different versions of each ship, uh, which is the norm. Uh, the uh, the second version of this ship is is really unplayable. It's way it's it, it's half as good as the other side, but it but it's more expensive. So you really kind of only get 
realistically, you only get one version of the interdictor that's that's usable, and even that version could use a little help. I mean, it's 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 a good ship, and I really like it. Uh, but a little bit more advanced, and the price isn't super cheap either for this one, so it's a little bit lower on the list. Get get a, get, get some games under your belt first. Um, it is a fun ship, though. It's important to have one eventually, and it's also uh, a pretty iconic ship. So, and again, you can totally get this first if you're again if you're a big fan of Star Wars Rebels. You probably saw this is the this interdictor's sort of based off of the interdictor's appearance in Rebels, as opposed to interdictors from like comics and books. So it's it's based on the the newer Star Wars Rebels canon version of the Interdictor. Moving forward, why do I have Clone Wars ships on here? Well, the Galactic Republic came out with the Venator expansion, and uh, this was a popular one. It had a lot of us wondering, when are they going to do this for the Empire? Well, you can now run it in the Empire. Even though this ship on its own is a, you know, is a Republic ship, through rapid reinforcements, we were given an Imperial Venator card that you can use with this ship and its cardboard. So you have a whole different version. Now, it's up to you if you want to repaint this thing in Imperial Gray, as you would see in things like the Bad Batch, or if you want to leave it with, you know, with these Republic colors on it. You can make the ship look however you want it. Again, these are pre-painted ships after all, but a lot of us do like to repaint our Armada ships, and I love to do that. So I do have one of these that is painted in Imperial Gray. I wouldn't recommend getting more than one, though, because the current Imperial Venator is a unique ship, so you can only have just the one in your list. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, but I've heard it may have been because of balance issues. Um, but as of today, uh, you can only run one Imperial Venator. Um, and, and you're not getting two versions of that ship card either, so there's, there's less options for that. It's a neat ship. It's not a particularly super strong ship for the Empire, but... I think this is better. It's a better deal if you're interested in the theme. I like the idea of running <clears throat> an early Empire fleet. I've done this a couple of times. It's a cool. It's a cool option. Much better value if you play multiple factions. If you're also playing the Republic, much better value. And I have to mention this. I have to mention the Imperial Super Star Destroyer. It's obviously not something you should get on a budget. It's obviously not. It's two hundred and forty bucks. It launched at two hundred dollars. Inflation, shipping costs, things like that have gone up. It's 240 now. It's a, it's an expensive, expensive ship. You should absolutely not buy on a budget. So why is it in this video? Because it's the greatest thing ever. Granted, the Architans is my favorite ship in Armada. This is my second favorite, <clears throat> and it's 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 my. Maybe it's my favorite ship because of the fact that it even got made. Here it is. Like here's a size comparison, right? It's it's massive. And it's not even to scale, because if it were to scale, it'd be like five times bigger than that, but um, at least. But Armada's always had sort of a sliding scale, so they made it absurdly big and as big as they possibly could to actually make it even remotely playable. Um, and it does have four versions of its ship cards. You can run two versions in legal, standard, uh, regular games, and then there's two versions for extended, uh, much higher point limit games as well. Um, it's it's a magnificent, beautiful, fun, awesome ship. And one day, if you find it on sale especially, it might be worth considering picking one of these up when you're no longer on a budget. I just didn't want to leave it out because I, I haven't talked about every single expansion that is available. There's a Victory Star Destroyer expansion. There's you dice extra dice packs and things like that. There's a lot of those little things that you may want to eventually pick up. I'm not going to cover every single one of them. Um, and this was one I could have left off. But I, 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 if you're a new player, you need to know that this exists. And this is like the holy grail of, of ships in Star Wars Armada. It's actually balanced fairly well, too. Like, it's not a, it's not a guaranteed win if you bring a Super Star Destroyer. Um, it's strong. And if you're, brand, if you're playing somebody who's never flown against a Super Star Destroyer before, you might win. But people now have seen them enough that people kind of, <clears throat> you know, have some defenses against them and know how to fight them. It'll probably be a really fun game, you know. Even if you lose, it's going to be a really fun game. Uh, but yeah, the, the Super Star Destroyer is just—I I had to include it for for posterity. It's just—it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, after you've got you know you, the ships that you want and you've been playing the game for a while, I want to talk about there's two different exp uh, there's two different campaigns for for Armada. There's the Corellian Conflict and Rebellion in the Rim. Uh, they're both in boxes, kind of like this. They each offer some new 
objective cards. These, these are important to make your gameplay feel different. Over time, you're going to want these. Uh, not initially, but eventually. But in addition to having new objective cards, they also have some new squadron cards and some titles and some, some new cards, new ways to use existing things that you already have. New bounty hunter pilots for those bounty hunter squadron ships, you know, and, and new tie pilots and stuff like that. Cyan Re and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, getting a lot of cool stuff in here. You're also getting a campaign in each one of these boxes. And both campaigns, both the Corellian Conflict and the Rebellion in the Rim uh, campaigns function differently. Uh, but they're all based on Empire versus Rebellion. They don't, they're not really designed to work with the Clone Wars factions because they were made long before the Clone Wars came out. But it's also, you know, theoretically poss possible to sort of adapt them for Clone Wars play. Um, but really, they're, they're, they're nice packs to have, especially if you have a group of people all wanting to play Armada together and you can meet like once a week and, and keep your campaign going and they culminate in this huge ultra epic battle of like, of like three people versus three other people and you just bring all of your fleets together and super fun, super, super fun uh, to do these campaigns. You should definitely check them out. Um, it's, it, you know, you'll have a good time with it. Uh, and, and that is going to do it for, for my list of uh, what to buy first for the Empire. Uh, let me know some of your thoughts, even though, yes, I did include the Super Star Destroyer uh, at the very, very end, I, or close to the end. Obviously, you don't want to get that first. but Unless, of course, that's what got you into Armada, in which case, go for it. But try and, you might be able to find it on sale. Look, it's, it's not a cheap ship. It was not an easy ship for them to produce. I understand why it's as expensive as it is. It's massive, and it's beautiful, and it will make you happy. Every time I touch my Super Star Destroyer, it brings me joy. It really does. Oh, gosh, this game is, this game is magical. It, it, it brings me so many smiles, and hopefully it brings you plenty of smiles as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are out of this world and help make this channel possible. If you like this video, check the links in the description below. If you're interested in Patreon or supporting the channel, there's links down there as well. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Always wash your socks and have a great day.